Hey CC families, this is week 14 of cycle 3 and uh, I'm just now getting to your video this evening and I ask that you just bear with me, I'm a little under the weather but I want you to have your memory work to review and watch for the week so uh, let's get started. We'll do timeline first. We had uh, C for Columbus. Columbus sails to the Caribbean and we do a little ship. Um, and Victor had a great idea to use three fingers for the ship because he had three ships and it kind of helps you remember that. So um, we just had like a little wave um, sails to the Caribbean. Um, and then 1500 AD, 1500 AD, age of absolute monarchs. And we acted very kingly and queenly and put a crown on our head, right? Age of absolute monarchs. And we just did the um, time our hands for the time, the years, instead of trying to sign the 1500, 1800. Um, I think in older classes I would try to teach that, but we're just going to do the circa 1500 to circa 1800. If you have older siblings at home that are learning the signs for 1500 and 1800, you can certainly do that. Um, but we're keeping it simple. So then Protestant is a P, a P. This is a sign language P with your fingers pointing down and your thumb. Protestant and then take two peas and put your wrists together and just spin your hands around, um, keeping your wrists together. That's the sign uh, that we're using for Reformation or change, a big turnaround. So Protestant Reformation, Spanish is your two fingers hooked. Bring your cape around front, Spanish conquistadors, and then plant a flag in the Americas. Um, Calvin's institutes of the Christian religion. This is the sign for Jesus. We'll use that for Christian religion. Um, and then Calvin's institutes were just this big long work where he um, just wrote out so much of the teachings of scripture, um, fundamentals of, of the Christian faith. So lots of big thoughts there. Um, so Calvin's institutes of the Christian religion Council, and then take C's, Council of Trent. This is C for the Catholic Church now, their council, their meeting, where they reformed um, a lot of their teachings. So we're going to do um, that same turn on your wrists for the change, the, the reformation of the Catholic Church. Um, and then Baroque period of the arts, we take your, take your fingers and just kind of make little sparkles. Baroque period of the arts, because it was just a very fancy, ornate um, period of arts, and everything just, if you could add like a bow or a frill or something to it, they did. So, Baroque period of the arts, and just make it sort of sparkly. Um, so those are our timeline motions, and I'm not going to sing that for you tonight, just because I, I don't know if I can make it through. And I want to sing some other things for you. So we'll move on to math. Um, our linear equivalents. So these are um, lengths. And we had a little length. 2.54 centimeters equals 1 inch. 12 inches equals a foot. And 5,280 feet equals a mile. And we sang this to um, like the bear went over the mountain tune. So... 2.54 centimeters, 2.54 centimeters, 2.54 centimeters equals 1 inch. 12 inches equals a foot, 12 inches equals a foot, 12 inches equals a foot, 12 inches equals a foot. 5,280, 5,280, 5,280 feet equal a mile. There you go. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. History. <clears throat> um, everyone did really well and seemed familiar with this um, history sentence already, but during the late 1800s, tycoons, and we did like put one hand out and kind of like, um, like if you were dealing money almost with your other hand on that, tycoons like Vanderbilt, uh, we're just signing initials, so Vanderbilt. Rockefeller, Carnegie, and Swift fueled, put 
fingers, fuel up your fuel tank. Fuel the nation's sign for I, industrial age, by developing American resources. And we'll develop or build with our hands. Um, and those are the signs for history this week. So during the late 1800s, tycoons like Vanderbilt, Rockefeller, Carnegie, and Swift fueled the nation's industrial age by developing American resources. <clears throat> Good. For Latin, we tried to do um, just a echo um, saying Latin and then English just by ourselves. Um, we were airplanes, and when we zoomed uh, in one direction, we put our left hand up and say the Latin and do go the other way and say the English. It kind of worked. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do it that way again, but um, the Latin was hoc erat in principio apodeum. This was with God in the beginning. And we just kept repeating that back and forth. Um, and then what is an element with our science? And I will play our song and I will email the file out for the song. element is a basic chemical substance defined by its atomic number, number of protons and atomic mass. An element is a basic chemical substance defined by its atomic number, number of protons and atomic mass. Ladies and gentlemen, And of course, um, if you listen to the file, then Elvis the Element Presley comes and we, they sing it again on the recording. Um, that's from CC Connected, so I'll email that out so that you can listen and enjoy that all week long. Um, for English, our irregular verb is to break. Um, so we, I meant to bring in like Lincoln cubes stacked together to pass around like hot potato, and then we get to break it at, once we finish singing. Um, I forgot, so we ripped paper instead. But it, we did to break, break, breaks, broke, breaking broken. And then our Northwest Mountains, I do have a map here. So our Northwest Mountains were up here, and this was to the tune Jesus Loves the Little Children. So Northwest Mountains, Cascade Mountains, from Washington to Oregon, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, Mount Denali in Alaska, formerly known as Mount McKinley. And in our foundations guide, it is listed as Mount McKinley, but it turns out that um, in the new guide, I believe one of the changes will be that piece of information, that it is now um, Denali. Um, it was, I guess, the original name of that mountain was Denali, and uh, President Obama reverted that that name back um, so it's no longer Mount McKinley it's Denali I don't even know that it's Mount Denali it's just it might just be Denali I'm gonna look into that you can research that too it'd be a great opportunity to look that up and learn together with your student and kind of find out about the name of that mountain in Alaska um, but that I've seen elsewhere that you can learn it either way for even for memory masters so Mount McKinley or Mount Denali should be fine um, so that's all of our memory work. For fine arts, we learned about Norman Rockwell and painting um, people and, you know, people doing something and the feelings that, that they're expressing as they do it. And he often had um, portrayed humor in his drawings. So we were drawing life up close as opposed to Grandma Moses last week that was life far away. And, and she put lots of people and lots of things in her paintings and Norman Rockwell would zoom right in um, and, and do, um, you know, a drawing of just one or a couple people. He's, he would do drawings like a, a boy and his dog, a, a boy drinking a milkshake, or a boy fishing, um, things like that. So that was fun. Um, in science, we added a drop of rubbing alcohol into colored water and watched whoosh, the water um, pull away. We, we experimented with that tug of war with the molecules of the water. Um, for presentations next week, we're on the letter O, 
can bring something that starts with O. Um, or you can draw or paint a picture at home and bring that in to share about um, and tell about the picture and what you painted or drew. What is in the picture? Is there a story that you're trying to tell with your picture? Um, so hold it up and look at your audience and tell about it. Um, so that might be a way to do something around the letter O as well because you can draw anything. Um, so you can pick something that starts with O for your picture. Um, that is everything. Thanks for a great week. I hope you guys stay warm tomorrow in the snow. And I'll see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.